What's going on, my PT peeps, my Walking Dead family, my fighters? I'm one eyebrow, also known as PT. Don't know if I'm winking or blinking, but I'm definitely thinking about Fear of the Walking Dead Season 6, Episode 8, my review, recap, breakdown. So obviously, spoiler warning for all things Walking Dead, Fear of the Walking Dead, everything related to the Walking Dead universe. Now, wow, Season 6, Episode 8 is a really good episode. But if you saw the episode, you know why it's like one of those things where you're like, wow, I am super pissed off right now. And if something didn't happen the way it did, it'd be a good episode. But hit that subscribe button for all things Walking Dead. Become a valued member of our PT channel, Walking Dead Family, today. Now, John Dory is focused on, he's in the opening scroll, opening credits, whatever you want to call it. He is on a bridge, a la Rick in season nine, episode five. And there's walkers coming towards him and it looks exactly the same. So they basically took the same thing from Rick. There's stuff in the way now, so it's a little different and the bridge doesn't blow up. And you know, it's a little different, but it's a little remixed for the show, but it's basically a callback to Rick in season nine, episode five, a sheriff uses his gun to take out some walkers and save the day here and there and he does. But one lives and one dies. And when are we ever going to see Rick again? We have these little callbacks and flashbacks, but we need more, right? But something major happens on this bridge, another major storyline on a bridge. But John Dory is at his place, he's all alone, and he's been there for some time, and he's going to kill himself. But every time he does, a walker shows up, and he kills a walker, and then he tries to kill himself, and kills a walker, and it's like, man, I just can't do this. But then he leaves, and he goes back to the general store, and I don't know if this bike was here before, but when I saw this, I was like, is that an Easter egg for Bicycle Girl? I don't know, there's not a walker right there, but there are walkers by the front of the store. John gets their attention, takes them down, and enters the store, and he says basically a line like, I don't want any trouble, but you found it, or something, right? And I can't remember the line exactly, but he goes in, and he sees bloody footprints there, and he's walking, takes his hat off into the general store that he was before, when we first got to know John, and then he sees Dakota, foreshadowing. He found trouble, and the first person he sees is Dakota. Look at the red stuff everywhere, by the way. And he stops himself, and Dakota is there, but she's not there by herself. She clearly has Morgan's axe, spear, bow staff, spear, axe, whatever we're calling this thing, right? Because she opens up the door, the back door, and Morgan opened up his healing wound, taking out walkers, and Alicia and Charlie, Dakota and Morgan got split up, and Alicia and Charlie are seen late in the episode. A ranger goes into the store, John doesn't kill him, but that ranger comes back when they're trying to leave, shoots up John's truck, and then he actually calf tie ropes, cow ropes, I don't know, calf ropes, however you want to say this, I'm not a uh, cowboy by any means, but the ranger is about to take Morgan away. Nice callback to when Morgan did that to the other ranger, and John Dory shoots the guy and probably falls off the horse, and then John puts a bullet in his head and killing him. So John's gotta dig another grave because that's what John Dory does, and they bury the ranger. John being John, he kills somebody and then buries him. John's just a good guy and he's one of our fan favorites. It's gonna be sad what happens to him later in the episode, but he buries the ranger. They go back to John's place, they have some fish, they talk. Morgan tries to make John go back with him to his sanctuary community settlement by the dam, and John doesn't wanna do it. John actually wants to kill himself. And later on you'll see, well early on you saw that John put a goodbye message to June, goodbye June with Scrabble tiles that Morgan finds later on. So Morgan knows that John is going to kill himself or try to and they try to work it out and it's just a whole big thing where John doesn't want to do it and needs a purpose to live. They find another truck that they need to fix and work on. Morgan evidently knows how to work on cars. When in doubt, give it to Morgan. Morgan can fix anything, but John, needs to protect Dakota. So they go to find a battery and some cables from another truck from a neighbor down the way. So they're talking and it's a nice bonding moment. You feel like John and Dakota have a nice moment and John would protect Dakota, right? But it's interesting because Dakota is sitting up on the truck and the body language of things is kind of telling after we see what happens with Dakota and John. But John is working on the truck to kind of fix it up and to help Morgan and Dakota get back 
from John's cabin to Morgan's sanctuary. That's about 40 miles away and they can't walk there. So they're walking and they're talking and they're trying to fix things and they're trying to take the door off of this thing and because John needs a new door to his cabin, but then they're gonna work on the door. You'll see where it's put onto the truck later on, but they get the truck running and Morgan's still trying to convince John to help him. And he brings up some good points. Like, it's not fate that I found you when I found you. And they talk about when Morgan and John met each other in season four and some nice callbacks to the story of where they were and some nice moments. And before that, Jenny calls for Morgan, but Morgan doesn't answer because it could be a trap and they could find out where they are. Then they go to the bridge, right? And there's all the walkers there that they set up the barricades. And I think it was Morgan and Alicia and them actually did this and barricaded the walkers there. They get the truck running and they use the doors and some other things that they found around to make this kind of battering ram plow thing, which is pretty cool. Dakota ha really hasn't driven before, so she's got to learn and remember what she did. And John gives her his gun in case she needs it. It's pretty interesting that this happened. John trusts her. John goes to the back of the truck with Morgan and their plan is kind of dumb. They're going to ram the spot after they open up the spot for the walkers to come through instead of like spearing them and cutting them down between the slats there too, you know, just rebar style through the fence at the prison. But Morgan's going to open it up and Dakota's going to drive the truck through there and they're going to shoot the walkers and stab the walkers. And of course stuff happens. It's not going to go right. A walker gets stuck in the back wheel well and it just can't get any traction and Dakota's trying to struggle with it. And, you know, it just doesn't work. So then John, this is pretty dumb too. My John has to go over the truck hood to fix the truck, not kill all the walkers and then fix the truck. No, he's going to go in that little tight spot where that one walker could easily get him, pops the hood, and the walker is still right there to get him. He doesn't try to kill it. John doesn't have a knife, by the way. He never has a knife. He just has his pistols. So then the walker is about to get him, right? There's a big hole in the hood. You know, magically it's there. Luckily it's there. Dakota points the gun that John gave her at the walker shoots the walker, but then look at the bullet hole in the glass. It's on John, right? So it's foreshadowing. And we know that now after watching the episode, but Dakota kind of freaks out. John gets the truck running again, and there's something to deal with, like the clip came off and the cables came undone. So they really had to go work on this and then John fixes it. But again, it's risky to do this, but they fix it. They kill all the walkers, well, majority of the walkers, Dakota crashes into the side of the bridge. The walkers fly through the fencing and go into the water. Morgan kills the rest of the walkers and um, it's safe now. While well, some walkers are kind of laying there in the street, you know how they do, right? They're just like, oh, they're playing, they're playing possum. Morgan found this picture of John and John's dad, gave it to John and that's the picture he's looking at. And look at this, a red rag is what John is using to clean his pistols. We all know what that means, and it does. Morgan calls Virginia to talk, kind of have a safe meeting, because Virginia basically used Grace to get Morgan's attention, but Morgan tells Virginia about John's place, and John can't go back there now. So John has to go with Morgan. That was his plan all along. Morgan wanted John to come with him because John is awesome. John is a gunslinger. He can cook, he can fish, he can do it all. He's pretty useful in a zombie apocalypse. But well, Morgan leaves John and Dakota alone. Dakota and John are looking for a red clip that's on the road. Yes, a red clip. They're talking and they're walking and they're talking and they're looking for it. And then Dakota finds the red clip there. So we saw a red rag, a red clip, a bunch of red objects in the store. And there's also a red Jeep on the bridge. But Dakota is going to reach for the clip. The walker comes out of nowhere that's laying on the ground, grabs Dakota, she drops the gun, and she can't get her gun, so she grabs a knife that she has. Of course, it's the same knife with the broken handle that John was looking for in Lawton. That is the person who killed Cameron. Turns out that it was Dakota all along. Cameron was the ranger that caught Dakota leaving. She told Virginia, and that's why Dakota killed him. John knew that the person who had this knife was the person responsible for killing Cameron, and it was Dakota all along. John sees the knife and figures it out, puts two and two together, and it's just bad news right now because John's like, why do you have this? And clearly we know why she had it. She killed Cameron. We find out the story for that. She tells him that, but then she also freaks out like, you're going to get me in trouble. You're going to do this. So she points the gun at him. 
And John's like, all right, whoa, I'm gonna put the knife down, put my guns down, you don't wanna hurt me, you don't wanna shoot me, I'm gonna help you, right? Wrong. She shoots John in the chest. We're like, what? What? I can't believe this, right? But it's fiction, so maybe he lives, right? Morgan was shot in the chest. Why not Why not John surviving? But Dakota says, you know, sometimes it's not that easy. Sometimes it needs to be done. She's not going back. She's not going to get in trouble. Then she pushes John into the water. And if she killed John like this, what else has she done, right? She's not this sweet, innocent person. She's got problems, evidently. If she could just kill John like this, and she's not upset about it, really. I mean, she is, but she isn't. And John falls into the water, very dramatic, finds the picture that he dropped of him and his dad. And this reminds me a lot, and a lot of people, when Nick got shot, but John swims up to the water level, goes on a door a la Titanic, floats down the river, and right here, we don't know if he's gonna live or die. So we're like, maybe he lives. He got away, right? But we find out later, and luckily they answered in this episode. Morgan comes back, sees that John is not there. Dakota's pointing the gun at him. And now Morgan's in trouble, right? But Morgan wears that plot armor. So he ain't dying, you know that, right? Dakota's freaking out. She's upset, but she's kind of not upset about it. Morgan walks closer to her and says, you know, what did you do? What's going on here, right? Morgan's trying to figure out what happened. There's no reason that John and Dakota should not be here on the bridge together. Morgan sees that she has the knife, puts two and two together that she's the one that killed Cameron, and now she killed John to cover her tracks. And I have to say, the acting here by this actress who plays Dakota is amazing. It was probably one of the best scenes I've seen on the show. But she threatens Morgan, Morgan knocks the gun out of her hand and points his you know, ax at her throat. And she says, you ain't gonna kill me. Like the nerve of this chick, right? But she says, I saved you. I was the one that saved you. I heard the message over the radio. I went to the gulch. I patched you up. I gave you antibiotics. So she's the one that saved Morgan, right? We said that before. That could have been a possibility. We were laughed across the streets. We were laughed out of town. But it was her all along. Her plan is to have Morgan kill Virginia. And she clearly says the only reason you're alive is to do that. Not some stupid settlement or whatever you're doing there. It's to kill Virginia. Virginia, the ranger, June, they go to John's cabin and nobody's there, obviously, right? But John is floating down the river and Morgan calls over the radio. You gotta help John, he's down the river. It was your sister and that's June's husband, you know? So that's big news for sure. Ginny sends out some rangers. Then we find out that Alicia and Charlie made it to the dam. The white is showing them what they've done so far. They built it up pretty good. Althea's there, Rufus is there, and you know a bunch of other people are there doing a lot of work. So we get to see that most likely being set up for next episode. Althea asks where Morgan is. At the same time, you know, just luckily like that, Morgan calls over the radio for Althea or Dwight. Dwight answers, saying, you know, what do you need? Morgan tells them to get ready for the attack if Ginny's going to go there, and also to get Sherry involved as they're going to need all the firepower they can get. June and Virginia are still in John's cabin waiting for any answers that they found them or anything there. And, you know, Virginia doesn't care. She's like, yeah, yeah, I already called. And June's like, call again. This is important. And, you know, basically, this is going to be the driving stake that's going to divide these two. Because Dakota, Virginia's sister, shot John. And you'll see in a couple of seconds that he, she killed John. And that's June's husband. So there's no way that June and Virginia are gonna have a great relationship after this. June needs to take revenge and kill Dakota and or Virginia or both. But June sees John wash up ashore there on the little beach sand there in front of the cabin and she runs across with her medical bag. John's on the door. And right now we don't know if John's alive or not. He's face down, he's not moving. June runs across the water and then John picks his head up and he's a walker and it's heartbreaking it's like oh man right it's like what the this guy was a fan favorite he was definitely my favorite new character on the show and it really is going to bother a lot of people and hopefully it makes sense for the story overall the episode is really good even with this part it's still a very good episode it's a little far-fetched with a teenage girl killing another fan favorite and the stuff with the car and the walkers and stuff there but stuff needed to be happening for the future of the story. And June ends up killing John, Walker John, Johnny Walker. But John's gone. 
So we'll have to see what it means going forward with season six, episode nine through the rest of the season. And overall, it's a very good episode. It's sad that my boy John Dory is gone, but let me know your thoughts, post your comments below. Again, it's a very good episode, but we can't get past the fact that John was killed by Dakota. And I guess we don't even care that Dakota saved Morgan because she killed John. So you're like, oh my goodness, what's gonna happen here? But Jenny and Dakota need to go, that's for sure. Thank you guys, stay safe, and tell them, Daryl.